Awesome. And well, thank God you didn't turn into just a flag waving moron. The no, no, no. That comes no. Out of the president's we're, mouth. we're kicking ass. <laughs> That is and awesome. you are a can of whoop. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, you're um, welcome. Hey, I want to hear about what you guys are doing down there, restoring your individual state's constitution. I think we got some documents that are going to be uh, going worldwide. They think the U.S. Constitution was a good one. They ain't seen one yet. Yeah. Have, have you guys got that letter from that senator down in Texas there uh, regarding the organic constitution and his acknowledgement that, the, that, that uh, everything that you do with the government is a contract? Mm, not familiar. I should send that to you. That's very telling. It's basically a confession by a senator that there's an organic constitution, that, that that's not the one that the, that, that, that the democracy stands for, and that uh, people are aware of the fact that and rescinding their contracts with the government and becoming sovereigns again. It's right in this letter. It's a matter of public record. Okay, I'm going to do something else while I'm on here. Um, I have a Skype uh, account, and I use it quite often. I've had a couple of them shut down. Okay. My Skype ID is Sheriff Roy Lamb, Indiana Free State. Holy shit. 30 Sheriff. characters, that's all you can get in it. Sheriff Roy Lamb. Continue. Indiana Free State. Indiana Free State. Okay, I'll try to shut down the account that had 700, about 80 people in. I'm that's trying to retrieve it. <laughs> wow. I'm talking to people everywhere. So. Yeah, well, that you know what the, the, this uh, the, this this connecting and networking that we're we're finally doing now. Now that people are, are are escaping the fear of oh, what if the government finds out who I am? They're going to come and black bag me. Uh, I got a word for them boys. We got a list on them. <laughs> they don't go nowhere. We don't know what they're doing, what they're up to, and who they're dealing with. Yep, I agree. And with we've that. got we've we've already got them infiltrated. Yeah, there, there, there's more of us than them, but this, this should never come down yeah. to battle. Yeah, and never come down they do to... stuff so it's so damn ignorant it stinks. So thank yeah. you, Dean, for being there. I just sent these videos out to a number of people. I've downloaded them, and uh, well, I've hey, that's, that's, that's not even the advanced stuff. That was the beginner classes. Uh, yes, but that's Winnipeg, way past so. what a lot of people, I mean, people's getting their teeth into this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, but we're I'll looking forward to what's next. Yeah, I'll hopefully get some stuff out there that's going to be uh, produced a little bit better, uh, a little bit better quality, uh, without some of the background noise where we actually have some. Uh, oh, it was structure. fine, but you did have one gentleman that just piped in on way too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we we tried to eliminate that as much as possible now. Yeah, have them ask questions later or whatever. Have them all yes, I will let you uh, let you guys go. Thank you for the time. We'll communicate. Angela, I've talked to you before. You probably don't remember who I am, but I've been on here several times. So. Sure, I do. I and, recognize the voice. All right. Well, thank you all. Meet you, man. Have a good night. I salute you. Thank you. Bye bye. Night. Okay. On to oh, we have another California. Go ahead, California. Uh, Dean, uh, it's Joel again. I just had a. Uh, you, I think you did answer one of my questions, which is uh, the bonded promissory note, a template, or where that can be created. Um, yeah, I. Uh, the, the, well, a bond, there's a bonded promissory note. Uh, the only, it's bonded because your signature is on it, and you've got the highest level of bonding anyone can have. You've got. Uh, you, you've already been redeemed by somebody that died a couple thousand years ago, so that's what gives your signature its value. Correct. So that's already it's bonding, uh, but sure, put that in the name. If you want a template for that, oh, geez. Um, I've got, um, when the, when I had to draft my own promissory note, my own international bill of exchange, we actually ended up generating them just from scratch by going through the Bill of Exchange Act and the International bill, uh, international United Nations Conference on uh, IBOEs and promissory notes. And I hate to say, instead of using a template, um, try to try to put your own together by reading into the law because then you're going to understand what you're actually sending out. And then when they contact yeah. you and say, well, what makes you think this is payment, you can answer them. Okay. I hate to okay. say it. There's going to be some reading there and there's going to be some research and I can definitely help point you in the right direction. And that's, that's two of the good ones to start following. In Canada, it's the Bill of Exchange Act. I'm sure in, in the U.S. you've got something very similar to that. And if you read into those documents, you'll find out what the five components of a bill of exchange are. There's only five components to it. That's it, right? And that's a drawee, a drawer, a due date, an amount, and, uh, uh, geez, one other thing that I can't think of off the top of my head. And then you can just draft your own. And then you'll be able to de defend that document if somebody comes back and says, well, what the hell makes you think this is payment? Okay. 
Probably not the answer you're looking for, but unfortunately, I don't give easy answers. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. The second thing was back on the ticket thing over there. We're we're here. We do uh, sign the tickets. Yep. Uh, I was thinking since you're signing it, you know, right before you sign it, you're, that's an original document right there. Why not just accept it for value before we sign it? Just just write clearly. And who for says value, you have to... return for value, and then go ahead and sign it? Yeah, clearly. And who says you got to sign on the on the dotted line at the bottom? Why wouldn't you sign above the officer? Yeah, you just assign anywhere, and that way it's already an original. You know, that way you're not worried about the, the getting the copy and all that. So, yep, I, I think that's the way it should be done. I haven't had a chance to get a ticket yet, but that's what I would do. I think that's brilliantly simple. It it, okay. it, it, it removes a whole lot of steps from the process to get a hold of the original again because uh, they don't produce those for us up in Canada. They just walk back with a pink ticket, but down there they make you guys sign it. You're signing the white copy originally, so do it all right there and then. Right, right. Just just put it all in there. I mean, you take the ticket book, sign it, get back, pay for yes. it. You're done. Yeah, right, right, authorized by administrator, accepted by administrator, I don't give a shit, and then sign above the officer and give it back to him. There you go, and you're done with it. Yep, say, uh, tell, tell, tell the course to send me the check in the mail when you hand it back to him. <laughs> all right, thanks, Dean. All right. Okay, let's move on to Denise. Denise. Hello. Hi. Thank Hello. you very much, Dean, um, for everything. I just think everybody should give you one dollar that comes to your um <laughs> one dollar each, you would have ninety thousand dollars already. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, well, like I say I've got uh the the quote on my, my YouTube channel is uh, I'd I'd uh, I'd rather die uh, broke in the pocket and rich in the soul. So Okay, that's nice. Um, I have a just a very interesting question. I was thinking in terms of the big picture in is being um, in trusts. How do you think um, from being from different countries and coming into other countries um, and you know becoming uh, residents or citizens? How does the whole trust thing fit into that picture? Well. well. The, 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 the trust relationship is only for the, the – explaining what the trust is is only for the purpose of making people understand who they are and that they're mm -hmm. a position of authority within their trust instead okay. of being something just a, just a beneficiary or somebody that, can, that accepts anything the state hands down to them or, or anything like that. Once you realize that you're a position of authority within your trust, within your legal person, your agent in commerce, whatever you want to call it um, – you understand that now you can enforce your common law right of unlimited contract. You, you, your right okay. to contract is the most important thing here, not the trust. The trust is just explaining who you are and what your authority is here. But now, now it gets into contract law. You have the right to contract with anybody or to not contract with anybody. You can never be forced to do anything. And if you are the signing authority for your legal person or your trust, if you want to call it that, the express trust, then you have the right to refuse anything. I, I don't have a contract with you, right? That's the important mm -hmm. relationship because what government is, government is another trust. So they're just a different organization altogether. You are an organization, they are an organization, and you are not compelled to contract with them. Now, this is, this is true throughout the world. This is not just North American or Canadian or uh, especially anywhere where there's it's an IMF nation. I wouldn't maybe say that China is probably the same deal, but uh, definitely anywhere that's a Commonwealth nation, anywhere that uh, your government basically has ties going back to the Corporation of London. Um, there's going to be a legal person created for you by your birth certificate. That's a trust. You're the position of authority within that organization, and you have the right to contract or not contract with anybody. That's what people need to understand, and that's the only reason you should understand trust law is to understand who you are within that arrangement to then go on and to use your right to contract. So if you become a citizen of another country, then you are going to apply through, you know, you know, basically, that's what I'm saying, you've got to ask permission if yes. you can contract with a well, new country. Well, really, all becoming a citizen in another country is, is getting formal recognition of your trust with it to do business with that country. Right, it's like uh, it's like now having a registered citizenship, right? Because it's a, again, it's a, your agent in commerce is like a commercial vessel in admiralty jurisdiction, right? It's a it's a boat, it's a vessel, it's a commercial oh. entity, and beca becoming a citizen and achieving citizenship 
is just getting recognition from this new jurisdiction that you, you can do business with it. That's all it really is. Yeah. If that made sense to you. <laughs> yes, it totally does. But and it's just, you know, if you, I don't know, you probably know this, that, you know, you, you find out that um, this government, which we, you know, which is a corporation, we believe is a government, and you're applying to this foreign agency, which is registered in England, if you can be a, a like a citizen of United States of America, which isn't really the real government. So everything becomes so confusing. Like it really becomes contrast. incredibly confusing. Absolutely. And they have, really, they have no authority to tell you that you can't come there and live there in the first place. But yeah, unfortunately, exactly. the way, yeah, unfortunately, the way the system is set up right now, though, you know, you're not going to be able to show up at the border of the United States and start making that argument with one of their border guards. Exactly, because I own that as well. Yeah, and that, that's just not the way to go because they're they're idiots. Uh, they have poor training, and they're just taught to shoot you if there's a disagreement, right? right. They're not the people that – if you want to deal deal with the State Department, contact the State Department and start to lay out your rules and negotiate with the with the United States if you want to, if, if that, let's say that's the place you wanted to move. There's a, there's a lot to be said about administrative remedy and negotiating. People don't try it anymore. Right. It's become totally missing. It is part of our conditioning. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I hope it helped. I, there's not really much I could say about that, though. Well, it's just interesting to see it from that point of view because once you see, uh, you know, if you see the trust, then that's just a whole new area which we haven't thought about. And obviously a lot of people won't because it's not, you know, everybody is pretty much... It's, for a person like me, which... Um, came into the country of course it's a very interesting question to me <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you angela oh you're welcome thank you for coming on and participating in our call <laughs> <laughs> yeah have a good north, night <laughs> north new jersey go ahead Did, let me see here wait are you hold on my board is kind of frozen good evening Good evening, say, North New Jersey. Did just say good morning. You, did you get, oh good, you got unmuted. It doesn't look like it, my board is frozen here, but it's just got a big long lag. Yeah, and, good it, morning. Is, and it is morning where you are, yes. I was just wondering, um, do you have a remedy or do you know if anyone um, has used a remedy to unrecord a deed by the administrator? To unrecord a what? Deed. A deed. Um, Just the, the recording is what makes them tax you, be able to tax you. Okay, which recording? Recording in the county. Okay, so there's a county recording somewhere, and that's that's where the the the, the IRS is claiming to have their jurisdiction to collect income taxes off of you. Um. I don't believe I mentioned the IRS. I'm not sure you understand your question. Oh, taxes. Okay, so you're talking. Oh, so you're talking property, property tax taxes. then. Okay, I automatically. Oh, well, I, I have IRS problems too, but I wasn't referring <laughs> to that. <laughs> yeah, I will. I would say um, again, we we can only presume what what the county, um, or in my case uh, where I live, the municipality, we can only presume what they're actually claiming when they try to come after prop, property taxes, because we know we have they we know they have no standing. So I don't care what's recorded in the county recorder. I don't think that just be that something just being registered in the county recorder automatically attaches a tax liability or obligation. I just don't believe that. Um, no one's ever proven to me that's the case. I think that's a presumption that people make. And that's why I like, especially with property taxes, and I have, I've shut down the government coming after me for bylaw violations, which is the same thing as property taxes, by contacting the attorney the solicitor for the government, whoever's coming after me, or in your case, it would be the, the county. If they're sending you a tax bill, you send them a letter. And you send them a letter from your position of authority within your trust or your estate. And you inform them that to the best of your belief and knowledge and understanding that you own your property, fee simple absolute, as defined in Black's Law, Black's Law Dictionary. And I can read the definition right here. It says, a fee simple absolute is an estate limited absolutely to a man and his heirs and assigns forever without limitation or condition. Okay? Property taxes are a condition of ownership. 
How could they charge you property taxes on something you own? Fee simple absolute that says without limitation or condition. 